Hi everyone, so let's take a look at um, emitting from collisions and contact masks. Um, I've kind of bundled these two things into one tutorial because uh, they, what to, to kind of use one you need to understand the other. So um, let's take a look at them. Um, I'm going to make a radial mesh network and set its axis to ZX. And then give it a few more points and a little bit less radius. And then I'm going to move this up with a transform, like so. Make the sphere bigger, move this up a bit further. And then if we just add dynamics to this network, we get this, which is boring. Um, yep. <laughs> so let's drag, go into the bullet solver and then just drag the sphere into the collider objects, which will give us something to hit. Very good. Okay, so let's uh, change a few settings. We'll make the gravity a bit stronger. We will go into the dynamics node and make the friction a bit higher. And then we'll just hit play. Good oh. Uh, now let's um, start playing with some um, context stuff. So um, we have this context roll down on the dynamics node and underneath it there is a setting called image from collisions. If we hit that and then rewind and play, nothing happens. Um, and that is because to see anything you need to go and turn on the collision positions on the solver. And now we are seeing all of the little yellow dots where a collision has happened. So if we just go rewind and play, there you go. Um, now, uh, what we can do is, um, I mean, the most basic control with this is the distance threshold, which will uh, determine uh, how close together these um, little yellow dots can be. So if we just turn that up. You get this. So if I turn that to five, you get a lot less of them. And what we can do is uh, we can connect a mash network and each of these little yellow points will become a mash point. So um, I'm going to call this uh, network main points. And then if I create another cube and go create mash network, we'll call this one, we'll call this one emit points. And uh, I'm going to make keep much smaller and I will set the point count to zero. Then on the bullet solver uh, we have this roll down called emit from collisions and if we drag the emit points network in here you'll see the little cube has appeared at all of those yellow points so if I hit rewind and play we get this. Quite fun. So Let's uh, take a look. So um, a few things to um, point out at the moment. If you want more than one point to be created when uh, you um, when you uh, collide, uh, what you want to do is add a world node. So let's add a world node. And uh, then what you can do is just, just turn the radius to 6 and then get rid of the um, collision iterations because we can let bullet handle that if we want. Um, and so now we are creating 10 points every at every collision. So if I just do this, you get that. Okay, so you can see all those 10 points, there they are. Uh, what we want to do is we'll have 10 random points like so. And then if we rewind a play, we get this, which is all very well and good. Um, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to, uh, use the ball cluster mode and the reason for that is that if we take a look in the y-axis the ball points are being created under zero which is no good because um, the minute we add dynamics they're all going to like pop up in a non-realistic way so um let's change this to fibonacci sphere no to um fibonacci spiral and then we'll just turn this radius right 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 right, right down like so and then when we hit rewind and play we get this which is good and then um, what we'll do next is we can um, add dynamics to this. Now, uh, something crazy is going to happen when we add dynamics to this. If we hit play, what? So many points got created then. And then same thing here. So many more. Right, okay, what's going on? So the problem is that um, 
the first network is told to emit on collisions and the second network is dynamic and the, when the first network creates the second network they're immediately colliding and creating more points and it's kind of like a feedback loop and it's no good so what we need to do is play with contact masks which is why we're here so um if the on the dynamics node for the first network and interaction masks there is a contact mask collision group layers and uh, collision mask layers now the group is what this one belongs to and the mask is what it will hit. So contact is those yellow points, so uh, we will register contacts with um, uh, the, other, the other objects which are in the groups here. And then collision is what we'll actually hit. So you can log contacts but not hit and you can collide and not log contacts. So that's what these three are for. So group is what this one is in and then the mask is what we will register contacts, the yellow dots, and collide with. Uh, so if the first network is all zeros, let's change the second network to all be ones. Um, and two things are going to happen. One, we're not going to be in that feedback loop anymore. But two, the second network is just going to go flying through the floor. As you can see there, uh, all the points are going flying through the floor. Why? Because the ground is in layer zero. Everything's in layer zero by default. And this is only being told to handle layer one. So let's go and change that. We'll change um, the ground to uh, call to be in layer zero and one to collide with layer zero and one, um, and then the same thing for the sphere. So we do that, and then we press play, and you see that the second points are colliding here, which is pretty cool. Good stuff. Okay. So I'm happy um, now. These points are just being created and they're not doing anything interesting. They're just kind of like falling to the ground, which is fine. Uh, but they're dynamic. We can do interesting things with these things. So um, on the second network, what we can do is under per point adjustments, we can go create. And then if we go and change the initial velocity, we can say put an um, initial velocity of between 0 and 20 in the y-axis. So that when these points are emitted, they kind of like some of them uh, bringing up, change this to say 40. Which is quite fun. <laughs> um, or we can say just move in a completely random direction. So if I put like minus 20, oops, minus 20 in these values and then say 40 in these, they're just gonna go in a completely random direction when they are emitted. Um, so minus 20 uh, would be the start value and then the maximum variance, uh, if I put 20 in this box, then it would be a value between um, minus 20 and zero. So I put 40 in the box, so it's a maximum variance between minus 20 and 20. So it's this number plus this one. Um, okay, so, and then we can, you know, if you wanna go nuts, we can put that Y back as well. So you just go rewind and play, and then you get fun things happening. Maybe there are too few many points being created. If I just put this down to say five. Cool. Uh, I can turn the uh, friction up on this as well, just to make that look a bit better. And that's it really. So that is a really quick look at um, the emit from collisions and then the um, the kind of the basics of the contact masks um, and collision masks. Uh, so I hope you found that useful.